Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCrady. Check out this episode I have called Faux Freedom. My friends, you don't want to be in a freedom that is not born of Jesus Christ. It says in the scripture that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is a true, rich, deep freedom that frees you from the tyranny of self and to the Spirit, to the Father, to the Son. And I want you to have the greatest steps of freedom with Him and for Him in this hour of history. Take a listen, share it with others. We appreciate that you're here with us on Tent Talk Podcast with Nancy McCready. Love you all. On this episode, Faux Freedom, I simply want to provoke you to think about is your freedom that you're able to respond to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit? Or is your freedom only surface level, meaning you look like you're free when you're with other people, you attempt to sound like you're free, you think that your uh, freedom uh, is based upon uh, how well you are doing, uh, that you uh, have to pretend that you're free when actually you know that you're in Uh, a gripping anxiety within. Faux freedom is something we have to decide. I have no interest in propping it up anymore. I don't just want to look free for only as long uh, as the camera is taking pictures for social media. I don't want to look free according to what other people think. I especially don't want to look free according to what I always thought it would look like. You know, I make a statement in my book, uh, From Trauma to Trust, that, you know, the dream that God is working on is not the dream that you dreamed on the bed of your abuse. Oftentimes when we're oppressed and we're in difficult situations, whether as children, teenagers, adults, We literally can spend long periods of time fantasizing about freedom, thinking about what it would be like. Wouldn't it be great if this or that happened? Wouldn't it be so relieving to not have others pressing me? I also talk about that in my book, this claustrophobic relational pressure. And when you can feel that pressure, that inward tension so intensely, Oftentimes we think our only freedom would be if we were free from people and the demands uh, that come upon us uh, when we are in relationship or in certain tasks or jobs um, or assignments. And so literally our internal way of escape is to think and to fantasize about a faux freedom. Oh, wouldn't it be great if... I was here or there or with these people or that person. Or if I looked like this or that, then I would be free. Yet we talk about, preach about, that wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. But do we really, really believe that? And if we do, if we really believe that, Are we allowing him to truly free us from the slavery of self? From what the old saints would call the tyranny of self. And I want to encourage you to want the true freedom that comes only in your oneness with him. You can't produce it. You can long for it. You can invite it. You can cooperate with him you can't produce it. So there is no condemnation if you're like, well, I'm not free and I'm, I'm such a bad person and I'm still so enslaved to the opinions of others. Self, that nature, 
And that is no longer your nature, but it is still operative. There's a residue of it that still operates within the soul and body. Within that nature is the fear of man. Is what I call creature worship. And the only deliverance from that is death. And that's been arranged for you by those who love you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And because they loved you and they desired the real you, the you they made in Christ before the foundations of the world, they required of themselves everything that was necessary to truly purchase your freedom. You can read it in so many places throughout the Word. Galatians 4, 4 through 7. That everything Jesus did, first and foremost, was for the Father. He was sent because the Father loves you. But you're not going to get free just because God loves you. God loving you provided a sacrifice for you. One who would take everything of the old down to the grave. And then by the glorious power of the Father would be raised up in newness of life. And then he would give to you everything that is his. So you see, a faux freedom is so very sad, so shallow. And it keeps us trying to look free uh, because of how we look, how we dress, who we know, where we go, what we have. That's all external, outward, physical privileges, advantages, appearances. That's how Paul states it in Philippians 3, 4 through 6, when he mentions his own, lists his own ways of meeting his own needs and being somebody separate from Jesus. But he says all of that faux freedom, that which I once thought was life to me, he said, I, I now count all of that as a total loss, as one combined pile of dung, garbage, rubbish for the sake of knowing Jesus and becoming more intimately acquainted with him. Real freedom is sometimes something you haven't even tasted yet so you don't even know what it is. And for so long we've settled for a certain type of freedom, which I'm calling faux freedom. And in my book, From Trauma to Trust, which, of course, I encourage you to order from uh, Amazon, in it I talk about this faux freedom, this seeming emancipation from being enslaved to people-pleasing and trying to be good enough to get people to love you. And my friends, once you come to the end of that, What self does is then it just flips over to the other side, and it is not a true emancipation. But it's where we throw off all restraint and we say, you know what, I don't care what people think. I'm going to do whatever I want. And then we begin to see the pendulum swing wild to the other side. And we think we're in freedom, but we're not. Because until he truly sets you free from self inwardly by the power of the cross, there is not freedom. It's a faux freedom. It's a fake freedom. And I don't want you just swinging with the pendulum of self from being enslaved to man to not caring and becoming uh, just a caricature I want you to flip completely from self to spirit. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where he is allowed to work and to do in you and for you what, my friends, you cannot do for yourself and you were never meant to. Do not be outwitted by the enemy in this hour. Do not think That freedom is just the uh, opposite of what you've been in, whatever that may be. Maybe you've been, quote, evil, involved in those things that look negative and bad. 
And so you flip and decide to be good and to clean things up and, you know, and all that goes with that. My friends, you know, a quarter is a quarter. It may be heads or tails, but it's still a quarter. And self and flesh are still self and flesh, whether it's the good side or the evil side. We are those who have been destined to eat of the tree of life, which is Jesus Christ himself. And there is a freedom and an emancipation that they bring, that only they can bring their way. And it comes through death, allowing them to apply. You don't kill yourself. Uh, You don't try to crucify yourself. You don't try to be dead. (laughs) They arranged all of that. You were included in the death of Jesus so that you could share in the life, the actual life and nature of Jesus. Romans 6 says so. And this is what they provide for you. And then you could spend the rest of your days growing up in that life and truly living free to them. This is what Second Corinthians uh, five fourteen and 15, that if one died, he died for all, so that we might no longer live for ourselves, but live unto him. Oh, the freedom. So I'm inviting you today Come out of faux freedom. If you say, Nancy, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. (laughs) Ask Holy Spirit. Show me what I'm in. Where I may be outwitted. Where I think I've hit freedom. And maybe I'm just on the flip side of the coin. And I haven't even yet come into the depth of the Spirit that you have for me, Father. Ask them. They long to take care of you, to tend to you, to nurture you, to mature you, and to bring you into the truest and greatest and richest depths of freedom that are possible, and that's only in Him. So I pray that this episode has provoked you to go deeper with Him and potentially to connect more with me. So I'm flying out here in the next day or so as you listen to the episodes this week. Just be aware that uh, Wynn and I are flying out to Europe. I will be there for about uh, four to five weeks uh, and will return back uh, into the States uh, first part of May. Wynn will only be with me for the first uh, couple of weeks of the trip, which I am thrilled about. But we would appreciate your prayers for us, yes, but, but for the work and for those who we will be in connection with. Poland, Austria, Ukraine, and Germany. So thank you. Thank you for being connected with Nancy McCready Ministries here on Tent Talk. And I pray that you will uh, continue to go deeper with him. And if at all possible, uh, we would appreciate you helping us to get the message out here on Tent Talk by giving a uh, five-star rating, a great review, Put it out on your own social media, places where you have influence, and encourage others to come over and check out Tent Talk Podcast with Nancy McCready. All right? Thank you so, so much. We look forward to our next time together. Love you all. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccready.com or follow her on social media at nbmccready.com.